Hi folks, today's video we're going to be building this evaporative cooling wall. These videos are brought to you in part by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your continued support. I'm sort of going to wing it a little bit on this whole installation because I'm not exactly sure how it's all going to fit together in here. Uh, but the goal is to take this uh, piece of 8 inch Schedule 40 uh, PVC and that will be used as the, uh, the take up for the water as it comes off the uh, evaporative cooler pads. And then on the end here, um, what I want to do is uh, dig a small hole and uh, put this uh, T-elbow on with a cap down further and that will act as a sump and a lot of that will be uh, determined on how deep I can dig into this hard pan. Uh, it really needs some uh, pickaxe and a shovel and I'm sort of in a confined space so we'll see how far we get with that. And then as we uh, start doing the pad install they'll sit into that uh, 8 inch slot in here and um, be held up with something else up here to be determined. Um, but I'm undecided if I want this uh, trough to be sitting directly on the ground like this or if I want it to be up a little bit higher you know, so that way the pad is completely directly in front of the uh, louvers. Uh, one thing if I can put it down here I, one way or another I still have to put a uh, board or something across here to, to direct the airflow into this uh, but if I have a board with this down here like this I could actually turn this into a louver and have it open up this way and that way if I wanted to bring in fresh air without having to take the force to pull, pull the air uh, through these some of the air could at least come up and over these uh, so I'm undecided if I just want to keep them up here or drop it down here so as we go along I'll sort of uh, figure it out of course I'm in really tight spot here so I can't get to uh, a wheelbarrow easily so this has to come out five gallons at a time I'm also borrowing my wife's gardening shovel a little bit smaller handle easy to get into the hole and we'll just keep it our little secret that I'm using it and hopefully I don't break it. start off by putting the tea in and I can set that down into the well a little bit and figure out what my total length of this is going to need to be. I went out of camera view on that one. Sort of had to scramble to get the push on all the way. I get a lot of comments for some reason about using the uh, PVC cleaner on my fittings which I'm sort of surprised about because it's a pretty important part to make sure that there's no oils or anything on these fittings. The cleaner is used to get all the crap off of these pipes and it allows the solvent to weld the two pipes uh, together nicely. This really isn't a glue, it's a solvent that uh, dissolves the PVC a little bit and, and welds the two sections together to make one big piece. So using a uh, cleaner is a pretty cr critical part of this whole process. Since I don't have a chop saw big enough to cut through this, I'm going to see how I can do this with my circular saw. Should be alright.
This end will be the sump pump for the well, so we'll just uh, cut that down and that will fit nicely into the hole that I already dug. If you have any cuts on your hands, you'll have no problem feeling it if this stuff touches that cut. Cut these to be uh, six and a half inches wide just to have a little play for these six inch wide pads. However, they still don't fit. And what it looks like is, is once I cut this open, the uh, piping is curled back in on itself a little bit. So I'm going to have to skim these down a little bit more uh, to open it up a little more. Oh, much better. There's really no need for the pads to sit all the way down in the bottom, so we're gonna raise them up and use uh, the piece that I cut out earlier as a uh, little shelf for it. So the water will just come down, hit against this, and then go down into the bottom of the tray and drain out. Next thing is to figure out how to make up a bracket uh, for it to hold all the plumbing and the top of the uh, pads. So just to figure out how far it needs to come out, I'm just going to plumb up the pad, measure off from the bracket, and it looks like I'm going to need about uh, 16 inches or so. Through the magic of television, the brackets are now done. Painted a lovely coat of scrap spray paint. And just throw them in just like that. The spray bar mounted up under the bracket like this. I have a distance of five feet eight inches of clearance. If I stack uh, three bricks on top of each other, I can raise up the uh, trough by seven inches. So that's uh, pretty good. So I'll raise that up and uh, that will bring the top of the pads right up uh, near the spray bar. And that will help reduce some of the, uh, the spray out and getting it to go all over the place. This is the same pump I used for uh, the main aquaponics system. Uh, this one's just slightly used. It's a nice DC pump, variable speed, so I'll be able to adjust the uh, flow of the spray bar a little bit um, going onto the pads. So I was just gonna use this, and we'll just uh, attach this pipe with a threaded fitting on it. And then that's gonna drop down into the sump. Next, I'm gonna put on a coupling, this rubber coupling. Um, I would have done a standard PVC union, but 
they didn't have any in stock and I wasn't gonna wait for one to come by in mail order. I have this T in here that will go to a one inch valve. And this will be used to uh, drain out the system. I can just turn on the pump and flush out the water so I can winterize uh, the sump, get everything all dried out. I made up this hanger out of some heavy wire that I'll run the spray bar into. And that just hooks onto there. I can adjust the height of it a little bit or move it back and forth as I uh, need to. And for now, I'm just gonna install a temporary pipe in here. And that will allow me to put on this other coupling and then my two 45 degree elbows and tie it uh, nicely into this area. Then I'll pull this out drill a bunch of holes in it for the spray bar and you should be just about all set. All right, once again, through the magic of video editing, I now have a spray bar filled with holes that are drilled every two inches. It helps to hit the record button once in a while. Nothing too exciting with that uh, drilling of holes in the pipe. We're just gonna put this together now and the last piece of plumbing is this ball valve which will be used to uh, blow out the line if there is any debris that gets caught in the holes I can poke it up, up in and then just blast out the water out of the end this next section is used to uh, hold the evaporative pads in from the front and also um, you know, to make sure all the airflow is going through the air pads and not hitting the uh, piping and disturbing the, the water as it's coming out. You don't want the water to get hit by the air and then go flying out someplace else. Before I cover everything up, it's a good idea to wash out all the debris and stuff. There's a lot of PVC sawdust in here and I don't want it to get caught up in the pump and the uh, filter pads, so we'll get it all washed out here. I wanted to try a little experiment, so I pre-filled the trough with some water. This is about its normal water line. And I'm going to run the system with the holes facing down. I'm probably going to get quite wet doing this with the airflow coming in. It's just going to blow the water everywhere. But I wanted to try it with the holes facing down because I'm suspecting that where the water's coming in, the water's going to come out faster out of those holes than on the uh, farther end down. So I'm going to try it one way with the holes down, then I'm going to rotate the pipe over and have them all facing up, and they'll act more as a uh, trough and the water should percolate up and over the uh, top of it. Uh, might get a little bit better uh, water distribution. So let's see what that does. That's definitely what's happening is it's coming down through here and then we're just out of water uh, through here. So I'd have to turn up the pump faster, which would just shoot it out that way. So let's flip it around and see what happens. Few adjustments and I think we'll be okay. So after watching this a little bit, I think I'm going to raise these up so they're actually resting right against the uh, spray bar. So as the water comes down, it will just hit against the cardboard instead of the surface tension grabbing out of the pipe and it's flicking it uh, pretty far forward. So I'm going to raise the whole thing up a little bit so that these are just um, pushing right against that spray bar. I think that will solve that. Thankfully, with just a couple of quick adjustments to these bricks, 
It's enough to raise it about an inch and a half, or inch and a quarter. I think I'll install all of these now, just to test it out, and then I can finish uh, buttoning up all the other pieces and getting the water line installed. The fill for the sump here will uh, basically just be the PEX tubing coming in from the other side of the greenhouse. I'm going to put an elbow in this and point this downwards into it. Lastly, we'll just install this autofill valve. I made up a simple little wooden bracket with some hose clamps that just clamps the tube into place and I can easily just slide this up or down if I wanted to adjust the water level in the sump. I fired this up and let it run for a little while and it's working very well. I'm getting a few spots where there's a couple of drips that are just blowing right through this. Um, so if I button it up any tighter, I think it's just going to blow a lot of water out of this. Um, so I may have to have a bypass in place all the time. Uh, the greenhouse is fairly narrow and long so I have a lot of air getting sucked through it. And I think if it was a wider greenhouse with a wider wall, the airflow wouldn't be so fast through this. But this is working uh, pretty well. You probably remember earlier I spun the spray bar around so the water would come out of the top and you can see that's working really well where it just comes out and then goes right into the pad. I have a couple areas where there's basically some water channels that are running down the face of the pad and I think that's from my spacing of the spray bar being at two inches and in hindsight it probably should have been an inch and a half or an inch. Um, so at some point I may uh, revise that, but I'll let this run for a while like this and see what happens. Overall, the pads are fully saturated and it's not like there's um, any dry spots anywhere on here. So they are 100% wet and pulling air through them completely. So that's about it for this project. I hope you learned a few things about evaporative coolers. If you like this sort of thing, we'd appreciate your support on Patreon. Uh, those pledges do help uh, to fund some of these projects like this that I normally couldn't have afforded to install. Thanks for watching.